What is up, everybody? Welcome to Big Buzz. I'm Gavin Chatton. We got a big episode, Wild Card Weekend. I'm here with my co host. What's up, y'all? My name's Kaz. Here to kick it, talk about some wild card football, and we'll pass it to my man D. You know what it is, bro? Devin, you know. Let's talk some sports, baby. You know, we got, we'll it. keep it simple. We got a big episode today. Obviously, wild card weekend this weekend, playoff starting. Yeah. Wild week 18 just happened. Mm -hmm. But we're going to kick start it with. Um, the Seahawks and the 49ers, and the 49ers are a minus 10 favorite wow. this weekend. I like it. Huh? Wow. What do we think about that, fellas? I'll start it off. I mean, minus 10, I think that's a little bit of a stretch. The Seahawks have proved to be somewhat of a decent team. Towards the end of the season, they started to fall off. But I think minus 10, it's a little much. Uh, I don't know that the 49ers cover that. But I do still have the 49ers taking this game. Um Regardless, Brock Purdy being the starting QB, uh, I still think that team has so much talent. And defensively, I think they're the best in the league. So, you know, you're going to go out and face the Seahawks in what I believe will be a pretty clear win. But minus 10, I think, is a little bit of a stretch. What do you got, Duff? You know, I, I kind of agree. I do like minus 10, but uh, I would bump it down maybe a little bit on the safer side. Um, Seahawks, you know, can't take anything away from them and Geno this year, but I do believe Geno is kind of coming back to earth, you know. Beginning of the year, he was phenomenal, but I think we're starting to see the true Geno that we've known mm -hmm. for the past couple of years. Yep. You know, like you said, Brock Parody being, you know, Mr. Irrelevant, first time in the playoffs, but that, that offense, you know, I think you could put anybody out there and they'll do something, but not take anything away from him, obviously. He's a dog. Um, you know, 49ers defense is unmatched. It's going to be hard to beat. I got the 49ers all day. Oh, 100% understood. What you got, Gav? 49ers are just one of the best teams I've seen in a while, if I'm being honest. If they had a true, true starting quarterback, I think this team was an easy lock to win the Super Bowl this year. But they had Brock Purdy, a Mr. Irrelevant guy. I think this team still is going to go to the Super Bowl, if I'm being honest. I think this team's going to – Beat the Seahawks by minus nine and a half, if I'm being honest. The 49ers, the last time this team faced the Seahawks in the playoffs was back in 2014, I want to say, in the NFC Championship where that iconic play with Michael Crabtree right. and Richard Sherman happened. Right. Yep, yep. But one of y'all like to say that line, if y'all can say it. Yeah, you put me on a sorry receiver like Crabtree. That's the result you're going to get. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. And, uh, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, 49ers. Even though they do have Brock Purdy, I still have them making it to the NFC Championship at least. I They're my favorite in the NFC to actually win it all. Um, I'm yeah, The 49ers are just such a good squad from Charverius Ward in the corner. Um, Malfunga at the safety. I'm not exactly sure how to say his name. Dude, we got the defensive player of the year. Nick Bosa as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think this team is just so stacked. Um, defensively, they could. Just the defense itself could take them all the way. So, yeah, I think we're all agreeing. We like we love the 49ers in this matchup. Minus nine and a half. Yep. I think I personally think they're going to cover that against this team. I know I always say, I will always say, you can't, it's hard to beat a team twice in the NFL. The 49ers already did that. I don't see why it's hard enough for them to beat them three times this year. Okay. So, I'm rolling with the 49ers minus nine and a half. So, let's move on to our next game as we got the Chargers and the Jaguars playing Saturday night football. Chargers are opening up at a minus one and a half, but the spread is now minus two and a half. What do we feel about that, fellas? Um, Chargers look good. Uh, Justin Herbert is one of the top five quarterbacks in the league, I believe, right now. Yeah. Uh, but the quarterback for the other team, I also believe, is making his way up that list in Trevor Lawrence. Minus one and a half. They're basically saying that uh, the Chargers are favored to win this game just because the Jags will be at home, given they are a uh, division winner. I think this game's going to be highly dependent on how Trevor Lawrence can play against the Blitz, how Trevor Lawrence can play against that Chargers defense. And, you know, we'll see what happens. I think the Chargers take this one. Um, but I also do think this will be a close game. What do you got, Dev? Uh, I definitely like the minus one and a half. I do take the Chargers. I mean, I, Jags give up the fifth most points to receivers this year, and knowing Herbert and the receiver core of the Chargers, they will be throwing the ball a lot. But that being said, Chargers also have one of the worst run defenses. I think ETN will have himself a game. Trevor Lawrence will run a little bit. 
you know, I think Jaguars are going to do their thing, but, you know, like you say, it's hard to beat a team twice this year, yep. and the Chargers are definitely a squad to be reckoned with, and uh, I think I'll definitely go with the Chargers here. I like the minus one and a half. In their regular season matchup, the Jags actually blew out the Chargers. Gavin, I'm interested to see what you have to say about that. I was going to say, the Jaguars did kill the Chargers early in the year, and I don't think that's the result this time. I Ooh. think the Chargers are going to beat the did, Jaguars. This did time. they have uh, Keenan Allen at that time? Or no? They did not. Okay. And also, Justin Herbert was very injured after that time. The ribs. At that time, the rib injury against the Chiefs the week before that happened. So I would take the Chargers to cover this minus two and a half. But I also do agree with what Devin said, that how the Jags have a really bad, what's it called, pass yeah. defense, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Pass defense. Mike Williams healthy. Keenan Allen's healthy. It's hard. Field. Yeah, you got Eckler and one of the best receiving backs in the NFL. It's going to be hard to guard all those guys. And Gerald Everett, too. You can't sleep on any of them. What's any that? of them. Yeah. But Travis Etienne, I think it's going to help make it a game. I think, if I'm being honest, I think whoever's going to take the lead first in this game, take advantage of this game first, is going to win this game. And I think the Chargers are going to be that team to do it this game. I agree. Do you guys see the Chargers potentially taking it further than just the wild card? I don't, honestly. It's enough Depending who they play, and I think that team that they'll play in the next round is going to end up being the Chiefs. I don't think they're going to get past the Chiefs, okay. if I'm being honest. I think the defense is, is not, isn't going to be able to hold up. I think their offense will be all right. I think the defense is what's going to be the, the main I'm rooting problem. for this team. Like I said earlier, I said the Chargers, I could see winning a playoff game or two in this this year, but I don't think – I think it's only going to be the one playoff game this year. You know me. I'm a huge Herbert guy. Like uh, Herbert. We're all big he- Herbert guys, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Justin Herbert's a very good quarterback in this league and forever, for a while. He will be. League. He will be for a while. I think they take multiple games. I think they can take it to the, to the AFC Championship, potentially, to be completely honest with it's you It's definitely guys. possible. But yeah. talking about another really good quarterback in this league, let's oh, talk yeah. about Josh Allen and the Bills doing it for DeMar like, Hamlin. Yes. Going That's against good. the Dolphins without Tua Tungvaloa. How are we feeling about this one, Kazi? Uh, looks like the spread's at minus 11 and a half or minus 10 and a half. half yep. Yeah, so minus 10 and a half with the Bills. I don't think that's a stretch. Mm. Oh, minus 13. No, it yeah. opened up at uh, minus 10 and a half. It's at minus 13 and okay, a half. Okay, so minus 13 and a half. Dolphins without Tua. Uh, like we have already known this entire season, the Dolphins came out really hot, but as of right now, they've been cold as ice, not looking good, no Tua. Um, Skylar Thompson playing this game, I believe. I'm going to take the Bills minus 13 and a half. I don't think that's a bad bet. They're going to come out and show everybody who they're made of or what they're made of, who they really are. Uh, this Bills organization as a whole is just so talented everywhere on the field. Um, what do you got, Dev? I mean, yeah, no Tua is huge. Um, no Tua, you know, you got you're coming from Miami all the way down to Buffalo. Huge weather change. You know, that's always going to play a huge part. Um, I mean, I mean, what else is there to say? You know, the Bills are going to do everything they can to win this for Hamlin, for sure. You know, they're playing with heavy hearts right now. I think they won it a lot. And I think I'll definitely take the Bills minus 13 and a half. 100%. Yeah, um, the Bills are a very good team. Dolphins, I think they had a magical season. I think this that magical season might have continued if Tua was playing. I there's just no way they're gonna get past him with Skylar Thompson yeah. behind yeah. center. Yeah. I don't. Do we even have a status on uh Teddy Bridgewater? I don't think he's playing. Yeah, I think Skylar Thompson's probably gonna be the play. Right, if you don't mind giving us an update. No problem. I'm I don't straight, straight to the wiki. But going on what y'all were saying, either way, whoever's behind center, whether it's Bridgewater or Thompson, I really don't think. The uh, Bills are going to lose to this team, if I'm being yeah, honest. He at a minus practice. 13 and a half. Bills are a Super Bowl 13 favorite. and a half is a lot. I would dim it down to minus nine and a half, just because it's a division opponent. But I love the Bills in this matchup. The Bills are going to beat this team yeah. without yeah, Tua Tungavaloa. You saw what they did against the Jets. I don't even think they scored a touchdown against them. What was the score? Like nine to six? No, 11 nine to nine. Because, or 11, 11 to six. six. Because of that safety at the end, I know that messed up a bunch of people's uh, bets the other day. Whoever had that, sorry to Jets fans. But moving on, we got the uh, Giants and the Vikings. I uh, love this game. I'm gonna say my opinion first on this game. I think there's two fraudulent teams going against each other. Okay. What do y'all think? 
I don't think that the Giants are completely fraudulent. I think Daniel Jones doesn't get enough credit still. Uh, I still think he's a great quarterback. I still think he can make it happen. Um, the Giants are carried a lot by their defense, but the Vikings just seem such like a fraud team. I'll agree with you there. I think the Vikings are a fraud team. Kirk Cousins playing in a prime time game. Uh, do you think he has what it takes to take down this Giants defense and Giants team? I'm not fully sold. Jay Jettis is a great wide receiver. Um, got a great wide receiver core. You know, there. you got a great wide receiver core. One of the best in the league. KJ Osborne, Adam Thielen. Now you got TJ Hawkinson at the tight end. Kirk Cousins is that piece, though, that if he can't make it happen, you're not going to win games in the playoffs in this league. And I think the Giants do have what it takes. That X Factor player is going to be Daniel Jones. It is going to be Saquon Barkley. Those players are going to come out to shine. And I think the Giants take this one. And they easily cover the plus three spread. I'm going to ask you a question really quick, Kazi. Do you think this is a make or break year for Kirk Cousins right now? I think it is a make or break year, 100%. Uh, I think that's a great question. Uh, Kirk Cousins, you know, he had a great season. But this league, it's it's driven by the Super Bowl. It's driven by the Lombardi Trophy. If you're not able to consistently make a run at that trophy, you're not worth anything in this league. And sadly, Kirk Cousins, you know, led this team to a great regular season record. Unfortunately, I just think it's going to lead to a wild card loss. What do you got, Dev? I mean, yeah, I couldn't agree more with anything that y'all said. I think the Vikings are frauds. Kirk Cousins chokes in big time games. I think the Giants are hungry. I think they they really just wanted more. You know, I mm-hmm. think Daniel Jones will have himself a decent little game. Mm-hmm. Vikings defense is eh. You know, I, I think Saquon will have to have a big game. You know, Giants receiving core isn't anything crazy. Right. But I mean. I don't got much to say about this game. I just think the Giants are going to win it more. And I, I'll take the Giants in this one as well. Respectfully, I totally disagree. What? Okay. What do you I got? Think fin- I think the excuse me. I think the Vikings finally get over the hump. I didn't. I thought the Giants fizzled out towards the end of the year. And uh, Saquon rests. I, I don't like when players rest. I think, I think Vikings stand up here. When you say they finally get over the hump, do you mean they finally get over a playoff win, or do you mean they finally go make AFC a deep champ- run like NFC yeah. Championship or Super Bowl? Yeah, I'm thinking they start making their, their trek towards the NFC Championship. Okay. And beyond. Cowboys, I think, are frauds. They'll probably, they're, they Philly, might, they're probably going to end up. If Philly they kick five field goals. Hurts has been out. I never like when players sit. So. Well, they did You play. guys are disrespecting the Vikings. I am. Like I said to you, Ryan, I like I said to you, this Vikings team, beside, if we put away last week's win, right, yes, against the Bears, how many games did they win by two possessions? Like I like told you. 10 or 11 games, something like that. They won how many games total? 12? 12. 12. 13. 13. 13. And how many games? I think they won 11 games all by, by one, one possession. possession. By a 13-win team, you would think there would be a couple blowout wins. And let me give you my opinion on this game. I think both teams are fraudulent, if I'm being honest. (laughs) I'm being honest. I think both teams are fraudulent. Which one do I think is more fraudulent? I think the Vikings are way more fraudulent. I I think the Giants are going to cover a plus three in this game. I would take the Vikings. I would alt it up to a plus six. I think the the Giants will at least cover this game. But I do think the Giants are going to win this game. My final score prediction Give me the Giants, twenty to seventeen. The most common score in football. <laughs> we love that score. I like that. But I, like I think that. Saquon's gonna tear them apart. I hope that he tears them apart. Pause. Uh-huh. But I really hope this is a good game. And I think the Giants are gonna take this one. So you got the Giants. We're gonna uh, game. move on. What were you gonna say? Go for it. What'd you say? I was just saying you got the Giants <laughs> taking this game. You got oh, my it. fault. I thought you said something else. I'm sorry. <laughs> but. We got. We're gonna skip on along to uh, Monday Night Football. We got the Cowboys and the Buccaneers opened up at minus three, and now it's at a minus two and a half. It's a little weird to see. What do you think about that, Kazi? Yeah. So the Cowboys being favored uh, in Tampa, it's difficult for me to believe that Tom Brady doesn't pull this win out, though. I mean, Tampa Bay. I watched them tear up my Carolina Panthers defense. Uh, or just Keith Taylor and C.J. Henderson, for that matter. The same exact route to the end zone Mike three Evans. times to the yeah. same exact receiver. Yeah, but, fun. nonetheless, you're not going to see that in this game. But, I will say, Tom Brady in the playoffs, it's 
something that you really can't bet against. I don't think the Cowboys will give him much of a – I think they'll give him a fight. I just – I don't think they come out on top. Cowboys defense has a lot of talent. You know, Micah Parsons is a beast. Trayvon Diggs is a beast. Um, I just think Tom Brady's better. All right. I'll take Tom Brady in this one. What you got? You know, I mean, you know what they say. You know, Tom Brady 6-0 and against the Cowboys. You know, a lot of people are – Speculating that this year, I think he, I think he stays undefeated this year against them. I do. Um, I mean, one, when can you ever count out Tom Brady in any situation? You know, it's the goat. Two, I mean, Cowboys had a great year, slowed down towards the end, in my opinion. You know, barely beating the Texans, barely beating Gardner Minshew. Dak to me is not it. They did. What? I'm, I'm thinking Gardner Minshew still in the field. Uh, the uh, what's it called? The Jaguars for some reason. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you good. You good. But yeah, basically, you know, to me, Dak just isn't that guy. I think he's gonna fold. You know, Brady doesn't fold. That's the greatest quarterback of all time. I think he remains undefeated against the Cowboys. And you know that plus two and a half. I think it definitely hits. And I'm taking the Bucks. And the Cowboys haven't run a a third playoff game in like. 30 years or something. Yeah, I heard a stat it's like that. For them. Something crazy. I don't know if the Cowboys can make it happen. But for the next game, Gav, I want yeah. you to kick this one off. Uh, I haven't even given my opinion about this game. game. Oh, on the Dallas game. My yeah, bad, bro. My bad. Go for that. I'm going to smile at the camera when I do this one. I'm going to do it. Steve, I'm going to do it. Let's do it. Let's give me the Cowboys money line to get in this game. I like the Cowboys yeah. in this one. I think it's their time. The show that it's finally their freaking year. Yes, it's their year finally. Not saying they're gonna go win the Super Bowl, but it's their year to finally well, win a playoff actually, game at actually least. Actually, you did say that. Actually. Yeah, I was. I no 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 no. I said no 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 no. Hold on. I said they would go to the Super Bowl. I said they wouldn't. You win the Super Bowl. You went hype far enough. I said they wouldn't. All right. I think the Cowboys are gonna win this game. I do think they're going to win this game. I know Dak struggled last game. Dak, it's your time. You got to do this now. You got paid all that money. You got to do this now. You got all these weapons. You got CeeDee Lamb. You got Zeke. You got Tony. You got Michael Gallup. You got Noah Brown. You got all these guys. You got a stack defense. It's time. It's time for y'all to get over the hump. Give me the Cowboys. Finally, you need to beat Tom Brady. It's about that time. You guys got to beat Tom Brady. And you know what I'd love to say. I'll say it one more time for the podcast. It is hard to beat a team twice in one year. Give me the Cowboys money line. Let's move on to ravens Bengals. the game that we've all been waiting for. Ravens opened up at – the Bengals opened up, my fault, at a minus six. And what is it at right now, Rye? Minus nine and a half. Uh, yeah, they're gassing it. Minus nine and a half. Ravens are most definitely going to be better out of Lamar Jackson in this game. I want to know what you think about this one, Kazi. Truly and honestly, I don't see the Ravens coming out on top. I want them to. Tyler Huntley's probably not going to play. Uh, he, pra- he practiced today, by the way. Was he not he throwing, though? I saw he, he was, was limited, limited at throw. practice. I think... We're going to get into this in a little bit, but he did practice today. Okay, so regardless, Tyler Huntley or Anthony Brown, it's probably not going to be Lamar, so that's probably going to end out as an L for Baltimore, a farewell to John Harbaugh and Greg Roman. Um, But truthfully and honestly, the Bengals are serious Super Bowl contenders. Um, With Joe Burrow at quarterback, I truly believe he's top three in the league. Um, And... You know, the playoff, the Super Bowl window is always open for that guy. What do you think, Dad? You didn't need to say that. Yeah, man. you know, being as big as a Baltimore fan I am, you know, everything's unbiased on this podcast, you know. So, I do think, you know, it's whenever you don't have Lamar behind the line, it's it's hard to say you're going to do anything. So, with him being out and potentially our second string, even though Tyler Huntley's looked absolutely fucking terrible, uh, I mean, Anthony, it's it's a rookie, you know. It's hard to just throw him in a big game like this right. against a team of this caliber. Um, if the Ravens have any chance of pulling this game off, I think the defense and the run game is going to have to be damn near perfect, you know. 
that's it's gonna be hard to throw against them at all. Um, you know, like like Kazi said, probably gonna lose, and John Harbaugh is probably gone. Uh, Greg Roman's probably gone, and I have no problem with any of that. So with all that being said, yeah, I think the Bengals take this pretty easily. Okay, here's my opinion on this game. I think the Ravens should start Anthony Brown over Tyler Huntley on Sunday. Lamar Jackson is not going to play on Sunday. We all know that. Mm -hmm. For my bet, if I would have to take a bet on the game, I would put my all my money, my whole bank account, on the Bengals' money line. Hmm. But if I'm going to put this in a parlay, I'm going to take the Ravens plus 9.5, maybe even dim it up. I'm going to take the Ravens plus 9.5. The Ravens usually cover the spread when they're underdog, I feel like. They cover it a lot. I think Anthony Brown, if you have him behind center over Tyler Huntley, obviously. Ryan hit – he said this earlier. He said the defense for the Bengals wouldn't have to come up 30 freaking yards – for Tyler Huntley, mm-hmm. if you have Anthony Brown behind center, at least Anthony Brown, we know can he turned the ball over three times on Sunday. Don't get me wrong, he turned it over three times, but at least you know this can man, this man can throw it down the field. Right. Yeah, I feel 100%. like he can make the throws. He looks good. People still are high on him. He's just a rookie, but yeah, yeah with people. Huntley, I feel like you have to guard uh, some comeback routes, some slant routes, and mm-hmm. stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Brown can make some throws. Everything that Greg Roman's going to call. <laughs> and I, I am one of those guys that be looking at, like, the Instagram comments of the Ravens and stuff. Don't yeah, get it's me. brutal. Yeah, I, I'll look at that. And I hear all these people, like, giving Anthony Brown a lot of, you know, sh- shit. They'll give him a lot of shit for it. Of course they do. But. They think everybody's going to be Patrick Mahomes when they first come up. Bro, his first start in the NFL. That's what I'm saying. His first start. How are you going to. I thought he played pretty decent for his first start. I don't get me wrong; he fumbled in the end zone and threw t- two terrible picks. But besides that, he threw the ball con- pretty well the whole game. But I mean, yeah, I'm obviously I. You don't want to be a Ravens fan saying this, but yes, give me the Ra- the Bengals money line in this game. If I had to take a team in this game, I'll take the Bengals money line. But I would take the Ravens spread. I think the Ravens will cover the spread. If you're not feeling confident with that, let's dim it up a little bit to thirteen. Plus 13, I think the Ravens will cover that. Yeah, I agree. Y'all agree with that? Yeah, I do. But I got a uh, question for y'all. Mm-hmm. I was talking to a bunch of people about this earlier. Who will be the next Ravens starting quarterback in 2023? Good question. Good. Uh, obviously, Derek Carr is up there as, uh, as potentially a QB. If Lamar were to get traded, I don't know that a QB comes out of that. Um I'm going to probably go Derek Carr as a free agent signing or a rookie that the Ravens decide to draft. Or maybe A.B., I don't know. A.B. could potentially show them something this offseason that – Maybe he has a good playoff game. Yeah, maybe yeah. he has a good playoff run. Now. You never know. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the that's great thing about this league. So we'll be, we'll be thinking Ravens that. Ravens money line, please. <laughs> on Sunday? On Sunday night. If you want to lose some How money, much are you going to go put on that, Ryan? Ryan? Cool 50 bucks on that. Put it to 100 Bad. if you're that confident. Oh, I'll, st- I'll, st- I'll start my 50 on that. <laughs> Bad bet. I ain't gonna lie, you're gonna be the one that lasts the least. We got Davis our ten dollar thing. Line. But that's what they thought when Buster Douglas knocked out Mike Tyson. <laughs> you're right. Buster Douglas. But uh Dev, let me give your opinion. Who's the next Raven starting quarterback? I mean, yeah, I've thought I've thought of Derek Carr. You know, me personally, I'd love to see somebody like Aaron Rodgers. I'd love that so much. Favorite quarterback of all time. Um, you know, we've heard these these trades, Justin Fields, Lamar for Fields, and a first-round pick. Not um, even a first-round pick, the first overall, first overall pick. pick. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. Um, I mean, it sounds good, but, you know, it's – I mean, if anything, it's just another Lamar, if not worse, in my opinion. It is, but you don't have to pay that contract. You don't – yeah. Um, but – if me personally, I think I would I would take more like the Russell Wilson trade. I'd like to get like three first rounders, a couple second rounders, a couple second too, rounders well. for him, and maybe a you know a lower a, a tier three type of player, if not better, depending on who we trade with. But um, I mean yeah, like Kazi said, Derek Carr in the free agency. I say either that or we're, you know a, a draft pick. I don't really right. see us trading for another quarterback. 
Yeah, I'm going to go on a little different route. I said it to you all earlier. I think the Ravens are going to go to the draft and get a quarterback this year. And it's not going to be C.J. Stroud. It's not going to be Bryce Young. Hmm. It's going to be the guy that made it to the national championship this year. And it's not Stetson Bennett, that 25-year-old. Hmm. It's going to be Max Duggan. He's going to stay in the purple and black. He's going to be a Raven. I have a random feeling the Ravens are going to find a way to get this kid. I like that. That's Max Duggan. Max, Max Duggan. 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 Not a bad. Not in the national not championship, team. though. Yeah, real yeah. shit. That goes to Stetson, baby. Max Duggan. But if I was going to pick a quarterback to be the Ravens' next starting quarterback, Ryan, get on the mic for this one really quick. Get on the mic for this one really quick. No problem. Who are we talking about that would fit our play style, kind of, and who's a free agent quarterback this year? Yeah, he's going to be a free agent. Um, Got a good frame, kind of like Big Ben or uh, Joe Flacco, but uh, has Hmm. feet. Um, Ran 22 miles an hour, and that's Daniel Jones. I I would love to make a move for Daniel Jones. He looks good, looks like – and honestly, New York wasn't sold on him. So Mm -hmm. if you're not sold on him, hey, one man's – Crash is another man's fortune. But I say, I def- if I say you know, if trash we're trash rebuilding trash. or like we're trying to build around another quarterback, I would def- Daniel Jones sounds amazing to me. But I say, like, if we really wanted this bowl right now, and we're with the defense we have and potential, like if we get any help on the offensive side, give me a Rod. I think a yeah. Rod could take us to a promise. No, I like right now. I like the Aaron Rodgers thing, but do not mince my words. I want Lamar Jackson. Yeah, of I course. I want to pay Absol- him yeah. as much as he wants, and I want Lamar Jackson. I would, yeah, um, I would if he gets hurt, that. that's just a fluke thing. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna turn it into something. It's it, not. But that's the thing. He it can't. It's just gonna be a go- ongoing thing. He gets hurt every single I don't year. Believe that. That's and we gotta saying. pay I him guaranteed. And we gotta pay him guaranteed money every single year. Yeah. And the thing is, with that Roquan contract, congrat- congratulations to Roquan, by the way, for yeah, getting yeah. that contract. Yeah, Negotiated it by himself. Straight dog. Yeah, he's no another agent. one that. Doesn't have an agent, and uh, no one really looks down on him like they do Lamar. I just Lamar's just getting such a tough rap, man. So yeah, it's hard, man. It's tough. when you're a quarterback, and when you're a quarterback in the NFL, you're gonna get a lot of heat. And then, granted, you take you've had good records throughout your career. You've played great, um, unanimous MVP. But then you have times where that's a missed touchdown pass. That's a missed touchdown pass. Why didn't you choose to run right here? What quarterback doesn't? I mean, a lot of quarterbacks don't have to do the read option and know where to throw and have terrible coaches that are setting them up for the wrong things and taking points off the board. And terrible receiving core. We ask him to put that Superman cape on, and then we criticize him. So it's tough for me to do that. Yeah, but there's times where I agree with Lamar. Like, yes, you should be getting this guaranteed money. You deserve the guaranteed money. And there's times like I'm like – no, like Kazi said, you're missing these easy passes. You're out injured all the time. Yeah. I mean, what Why didn't you run the ball right there? Passes. Every but, quarterback's missing passes, but some of them you watch and you're just like, no, I get what you. You mean. shouldn't Wait, miss wha- that throw. Yeah, but going on from what I was saying, it's just I will keep saying this forever. I feel like the Cleveland Browns hmm. ruin the Ravens' chances of signing Lamar Jackson. Yeah. They Deshaun made it Watson's. tough. That's a good point that you bring serious. up. They Doesn't made it tough. They wanted to make it tough. But because hey, it's the new NFL. Yes, yeah. but you know Lamar. What is it? Sean Watson getting paid two thirty two, yep. guaranteed. guaranteed. All guaranteed. Two thirty. It's like two thirty something. It was. Right. It's somewhere in the two thirties. I know that. Too much. But he's <laughs> getting all this guaranteed money, and we's like, okay, Lamar accomplished more than Deshaun. Lamar has a. I think the same amount of playoff wins as him. He has a unanimous MVP. Deshaun Watson doesn't have that. Josh Allen doesn't have that. Kyler Murray doesn't have that. But you're you basing it purely off accolades. Do you think Deshaun Watson on the field and Lamar Jackson on the field? Do you think Lamar Jackson's that much better than Deshaun Watson? They're yeah. not much. I think he is better, yeah, if I'm being which, honest. Which yes. Deshaun? Deshaun, Watson Deshaun, can't, stay on, Deshaun, Deshaun can't stay on the Texans is what Deshaun Watson can't stay on the field. The Texans on the Browns. Couldn't stay on the field. Yeah, I don't yeah, think Deshaun's going to have a problem staying on the field here shortly. I think I'm, yeah, I think the, I think the Browns are a trashy organization right. that should have never gave him 232 guaranteed. How are you going to give a person like him that guaranteed money? Because he's a hell of a football player. And when he's on the field. Nonetheless, I mean, whatever's going on at home, 11 week suspension, whatever, come back next season. They have a great running back. Yeah. They have a great defense. 
It is two thirty. Quarterback right now that's pretty solid. You don't. I don't know. Deshaun Watson is still a top five talent at his peak. He's gonna. I think he's gonna get back there next year. I think Deshaun Watson's a great quarterback. I think Lamar Jackson's a great quarterback too. But I don't think their play is so far that you know they're both to- two totally different players. I think the talent wise, they're on the same level. But I don't understand how you give somebody like Deshaun Watson that guaranteed money. How do you give them? I don't know what the Browns were thinking. Maybe they were thinking like. Okay, we have Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow in our division. We can lock, or we can lock Deshaun Watson up and make these two have to pay that money. Yeah. So they're that's never exactly gonna. That's exactly that's, that's, Burrow's that's, getting paid, no problem. Lamar was the one that was questioning. Who deserves more money, Lamar or Burrow? Oh my God, Burrow! Don't yeah, uh, I was gonna, Burrow. I was gonna say the same thing. What do you think Burrow sh- contract should be at Deshaun's? Is two thirty? It's gonna be probably three hundred, four hundred. Every, every, yeah, that's just going to be an ongoing thing. One mm-hmm. quarterback's going to get this shitload of money, and then the next quarterback's going to want the same amount. I mean, it's just going to, it's, it's just going to be like the same shit over and over. Like, who's the goat, LeBron or MJ? It's never going to end. It's just going to keep fucking going. Yeah, right. not, not to interrupt you, but like, can we just like talk about the fact Joe Flacco was the highest paid quarterback in the NFL at one point? Just, just think about yeah, that. Yeah, one hundred and five million or something like it was like hundred, maybe one hundred thirty million. I don't know. But now, quarterbacks contracts. Uh, Patrick Mahomes five hundred million dollars for ten years. Joe well, that's Burrow, a good. That's a good spread out contract, though. I mean, you're getting what over ten years, fifty million dollars a year. Yeah. Was Joe Was Joe Flacco getting that much money? I think. Fl- what was Flacco's contract like? Five for one sixty. He was getting. Can you look that up for me, if you don't mind? Don't but he's while he's doing that, let's talk about this Lamar tweet that he had earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kaz, if you would like to read that one out. It says, thank you everyone for your support and concerns regarding my injuries. I want to give you all an update. As I am in recovery process, I've suffered a PCL grade 2 sprain on the borderline of a strain 3. There is still inflammation surrounding my knee and my knee. Hmm. So... Well, that's a classic Lamar. Oh, it keeps going. It's a little smaller, though. Yeah, and my knee yeah we can pull that unstable. one up. I'm still in good spirits as I continue with treatments on the road to recovery. I wish I could be out there with my guys more than anything, but I can't give 100% of myself to my guys and fans. I'm still hopeful we still have a chance. Two Purple Hearts. Yeah, so I've been watching a lot of the Shannon Sharp and uh, what's his name? Skip podcast. Bayless. Skip Bayless That's podcast. Hilarious. It's hilarious, but Shannon Sharp be speaking a lot of facts on there. Yeah. He be talking about how why would Lamar want to go out there and put his – you know, his career at risk. He tears his ACL against the Bengals on Sunday. His career's over. You're not getting paid over $200 right. million. Right. So I, I do agree with that, I mean, what he's saying. Yeah, Lamar, what do you all think about that? I mean, I think Lamar, he's just been put in a pretty fucked up predicament his whole career. I mean, it's not just now. I mean, it's a, it's a tough spot. You, you got to think about the long run. I mean, as a fan, of course, you're like, you got to have the heart. You got to go out there. You got to play because you want to win so bad. You want to see your favorite your franchise quarterback out there, but you know, when you step back from other perspectives and, and see things like that, like there, why would he, why would he throw his whole career on the line? You know? But I mean, that's basically all I got to say about it. Yeah. What do you got to say cause? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't see why Lamar would go out there. The people in the NFL know that he's a talented football player and you know, teams around the league who do need a quarterback are definitely interested, definitely looking into him as a potential starter for their franchise. Um, if I'm Lamar Jackson, I'm obviously not going to go out there and play Sunday. The reason you gave was pretty fair enough. I mean, why would you go out there and have a, a chance of potentially ruining your entire career? Um, Lamar Jackson's really talented. He's going to have a spot in his league for a little while. And sadly for you guys, I don't think it'll be on Baltimore after this season. Um, but what do you have yeah. I can agree with that. I think Lamar is not going to be a Raven after this year either, unfortunately. I think, I don't know, like Devin said earlier, maybe to Justin Fields and the number one overall pick maybe, but I think he might be a New York Jet Jet in the future, giving us three. I'll take three first-round picks and two second-round picks. I will never argue with that. Not bad at all. But, I mean, I feel like we pretty much covered Wild well, Card Weekend. I was going to yeah. say, oh, go if ahead. you were waiting on it, the Flacco uh, deal was six-year, 120.6, $52 million in guaranteed, $29 million signing back. How much was it, 120 you said? 
one twenty point six. Damn, I wasn't even close. Yeah. That's nothing like what quarterbacks are like today. But yeah, I think Kazi hit hit it early or a second ago. I think it's gonna wrap it up for today's episode. Yeah. Uh, everybody, be ready for a special guest on the next episode. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have AO Shags, TSU Flash on the next episode. Y'all excited for that one? I think y'all will like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, Dev, you got anything to say before we leave? Hey, man. Another phenomenal podcast with the boys. You know, plenty more to come. That's all there is to it. Cause? Big buzz. We're coming this year. 2023 going to be a big one. Yes, sir. You know, first upload. Hopefully, you all love what we have. And there's plenty more to come after. So, give us up. All right. Sounds good to me. Everybody, thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time. Thank you.